Okay, let's take a look at energy sources for contraction. So one of our energy sources for contraction is just stored ATP in the muscle cell. Now we don't store a whole lot of ATP in the muscle cell because ATP isn't a super stable molecule. So we only have like a few seconds worth of stored ATP, like four to six seconds. Next, uh, so once we start breaking down ATP, we can restore that ATP through this guy right here called creatine phosphate. So we break down ATP. ATP gets broken down into ADP and energy. So let me just write that down. So A, uh, oh my goodness, this, I don't know why this thing writes off to the side here, but uh, A, oh, I can't even do it. So ATP gets broken down into ADP, a phosphate ion, and then energy, okay? So, um, uh, so, you know, we get ADP out of this, so ADP down here. Now we have a phosphate ion uh, on, on creatine phosphate, and it just literally just adds a phosphate onto ADP to restore ATP. So uh, this can give us a, like another 15 seconds worth of energy. Uh, so, you know, if you're doing any exercise, you're gonna burn through all your stored ATP and creatine phosphate in about 20 seconds. So now we have to make energy the old fashioned way. And that's either through aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration, this is a breakdown of glucose in the presence of oxygen to produce energy. Um, so, uh, so we talked about this before. So, uh, you know, we use oxygen to break down glucose. Uh, one glucose molecule produces 32 to 34 ATP. Uh, you know, and this is why muscle cells contain a lot of ATP. All right, so this we made, you know, this is done through like, um, you know, walking, jogging, uh, resting. Uh, we do aerobic respiration. Okay, now uh, when we contract muscles very rigorously, uh, we're actually going to pinch blood vessels that are living oxygen to those muscles. So if we're doing rigorous exercise, like lifting weights, sprinting, stuff like that, we're going to shift to doing anaerobic respiration. So an means without, so without oxygen. So this is the incomplete breakdown of glucose without oxygen to produce energy, all right? So it supplies a quick burst of energy. Uh, this occurs in the cytoplasm, not within the mitochondria. But the problem here is its byproduct. The byproduct is lactic acid. And lactic acid can cause muscles to ache and eventually to fatigue. And we'll talk about what fatigue is here in a little bit. All right, let's look at uh, the physiology of uh, muscle contraction. Uh, so one is the all or none principle. So here, muscle fiber contracts completely or not at all when stimulated, all right? So if we look at the strength of contraction, uh, this is dependent upon the number of muscle fibers that we stimulate. So the more muscle fibers we stimulate, the stronger the contraction is. So the entire muscle does not obey an all or none law. So, you know, if I lift something light, I'm gonna uh, uh, stimulate less muscle cells than if I uh, lift something heavy. All right, let's move on to a twitch. A twitch is a single stimulus that causes a muscle to contract and relax. So we have full contraction and then relaxation. So I'm gonna do this with my hand. So here's a, a twitch, here's another twitch, and so, okay? Now what I can do is I can increase the uh, frequency of the stimulus, so more impulses uh, per second. So this is showing uh, twitches, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the frequency of uh, the impulses to that muscle. And we're gonna get what we see here and here, which is known as incomplete tetanus. So this is an accumulation of twitches. So here the twitches are occurring so rapidly that the next twitch occurs before the previous twitch fully relaxes. Okay, so this is what it would look like. So this is a twitch, and now here is incomplete tetanus. That's what it would look like. Now next, if I increase the frequency even more, what I get is complete tetanus, and that's a maximum sustained contraction. So here there is no relaxation occurring. So that's me doing that. That would be tetanus. Now, one of the things that happens as muscles uh, are contracted is you'll see this staircase pattern of increased strengths of contraction, and this is known as trap or treat. Okay, and so this is even though the stimulus strength is the same. So why this occurs is there's more heat available, the enzymes work a little better in those muscle cells, and there's also more calcium available. 
All right. Now, if we work a muscle too much, then uh, that muscle can go into fatigue. And this is where a muscle does not contract, even though it is still stimulated. And this is due to lactic acid buildup in that muscle cell. So, you know, if uh, we're doing rigorous exercise, right, uh, as I said, you know, we pinch blood vessels delivering oxygen to those muscles. So we have to shift, shift to anaerobic respiration to get energy. We start producing lactic acid uh, as a byproduct of breaking down that glucose through anaerobic respiration. And that lactic acid, as the name implies, is an acid. And that acid is going to change the pH of those muscle cells. And that uh, pH change is going to interfere with the activity of the enzymes that make ATP within those muscle cells. Okay, and so then you know you just have to wait for those muscle cells uh, to relax a little bit. Now some of that lactic acid will diffuse out, and you can lift uh, those weights again or sprint again, uh, but not for as long as you could the first time. Okay. Next is oxygen debt. So oxygen debt is the amount of oxygen required after physical exercise. Now, if you've ever noticed, like you've done a sprint or lifting weights or something like that, after you're done exercising, you still continue to breathe deeply even after the exercise is over with. And this is because you can't take in enough oxygen that you need for all your metabolic activities uh, during that exercise. So oxygen is needed to convert lactic acid uh, back into a useful molecule in our liver. Uh, it's also necessary to restore normal ATP levels in our muscle cells, normal creatine phosphate levels in our muscle cells, and then finally, uh, just oxygen levels in those muscle cells because where we initially draw the oxygen from is from the myoglobin that's in those muscle cells. All right, let's look at uh, aspects of muscle contraction. So when muscles contract, one bone is gonna remain fairly stationary while the other bone moves. So let's look at some terms associated with this, all right? So this is showing uh, a flexion here. There's a biceps brachii. So up here are the origins for the biceps brachii. And an origin is the end of the muscle that attaches to a relatively immovable part. So our scapula is not really moving, okay? The lower arm moves when our biceps brachii contracts. So down here on a radius is where the insertion is located. This is the end of the muscle that attaches to a movable part. Okay, so that's the insertion. Uh, in a contraction, we have what is known as a prime mover. This is a muscle that does most of the work in a contraction. So in this flexion, uh, the uh, biceps brachii is the prime mover. Uh, sometimes you can have muscles that help out in that, and these are called synergists. This is an assisting muscle in the contraction. Now, you can't see it on this, but there's a muscle on the other side, like right in this area, and that's called the brachialis, and that's gonna help out in this uh, flexion. Next is the antagonist. So here, the triceps brachii is the antagonist. This is a muscle that works against the prime mover, all right? And so uh, what it does is it uh, regulates the speed of contraction, and it also refines the movement. So, you know, you can do this flexion several different ways. You can do it this way, or this way, or this way, or this way. And so the antagonist is gonna help in refining that movement, okay? Now, it depends on uh, the contraction on what is the prime mover and what is the antagonist. So in a flexion, your biceps brachii is the prime mover. Uh, in an extension, like doing push-ups or something like that, uh, your uh, triceps brachii would become the prime mover, okay? So, and the biceps brachii would be the antagonist there. All right, so let's look at uh, types of contraction. So the first uh, is called, uh, the first I'm gonna look at is muscle tone. Muscle tone is a sustained partial contraction of a muscle. This uh, stabilizes joints and maintains posture. It also keeps muscles ready to act. Uh, and this works by uh, rotating motor units. So this is just showing like two different motor units here. So let's say motor uh, unit number one, the blue ones are contracted. Before those go into fatigue, we stop contracting those, shift to uh, the second motor unit, and we rotate this so the muscles don't go into fatigue. So these are the muscles that we use to keep us upright, okay? And we notice those don't go into fatigue, otherwise we would, you know, flop to the ground. All right, let's look at uh, an isotonic contraction. An isotonic contraction is a contraction in which a muscle changes shape, okay? 
So uh, this is uh, showing an isotonic contraction of the biceps brachii. She's bringing that barbell up. We're getting that flexion. That biceps brachii is, short, uh, is uh, changing shape. This particular one is called a concentric contraction. This is a contraction which a muscle shortens. So here in that flexion, that biceps brachii is shortening. This is a concentric contraction. If she takes that uh, barbell and starts going down with it, now that biceps brachii is lengthening, and this is called an eccentric contraction. So that's a contraction which a muscle lengthens. Uh, next, if she's just holding this barbell there, uh, the muscles are not lengthening, they're not shortening, and this is called an isometric contraction. It's a contraction which a muscle does not change in length. Okay, so looking at muscle size, uh, one thing is called hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is an increase in muscle size due to an increase in muscle activity. So here you increase the number of myofibrils within the muscle cells. So you can see that both of these people, by lifting weights a lot, uh, they have a lot of hypertrophy. Uh, the, other, the reverse of this is atrophy. This is a decrease in muscle size due to inactivity. So here you have a decrease in your number of myofibrils. And we typically see atrophy if somebody has worn a cast for a while and those muscles uh, have gotten smaller.